I think it's an underappreciated fact that successful market economies like the US exhibit a lot of trust. Trust between market participants who are both anonymous, they don't know each other well, and who are self-interested. And so if you look at, at the sharing economy, for instance, to a large extent, their success depends on their ability to create trust between third parties, trust between somebody who wants to rent out their apartment and trust between somebody who, who wants to rent that apartment. Or if you think about yourself, every day you trust people who you don't know and you trust them to do things that are actually not in their self-interest. And more often than not, you don't get disappointed. So if I told my wife that the, uh, the US economy exhibits a lot of trust, she would be, she would be very skeptical, right? And rightly so, because the, the history of corporate misdeeds is a long and distinguished one to which we've had many colorful recent uh, new entries. But the fact that people get ripped off is not really surprising. What's surprising is they are not getting ripped off more often. What's surprising is that I can go into essentially any store anywhere in the United States and be reasonably sure that I won't be sold a lemon. Right? That's what's surprising. Firms do so in two ways, both of which involve making it costly for themselves to break their promises in the future. The first is that they hire people and are run by people who don't just care about profits, but also care about being trustworthy. They're essentially people, if you want, who incur a psychic cost if they break their own promise. Now, in an age in which many emphasize the cutthroat nature of business, this may sound naive and, and, uh, and quaint, but it's not, because in a market in which trust is important, being trustworthy gives you a competitive advantage. So a historical example of this are the Quakers in the 18th century, who played a very important role in the British economy at the time, even though there was only a, a relatively small number of them. And it's often argued that one of the reasons for why they had such an important role in the economy was precisely because they were known to be trustworthy. They're known to follow through with their promises even if it was not in their immediate economic interest to do so. And that's what gave them a competitive advantage. That's why people seek them out to trade with them. We see the same thing today with firms like Keller Williams and the like, trying to hire people who are not just skillful, but also what they call ethical, right? And now, I don't think that that's just a, a, a cheap PR stunt. I think firms try to hire trustworthy employees, not just because it's a, it's a moral value that they might, might care about, but because it's an economic asset on which they can earn a return. The second is that firms commit themselves to a long-term strategy that emphasizes the importance of repeat and future business. Because if I'm not just a pop-up store, but I also care about future business, then there's a cost to me of breaking my promise to you today, which is that there's going to be less business for me in the future. So repeat transactions can serve as a commitment device. For this to work though, two things have to be true. First, not only me, but also my employees have to care about the future enough. Right? And so it's important that I'm providing them with the right kind of incentives, with long-term incentives and not just short-term incentives. And the other issue is the transparency is important. It's important that customers are able to observe how I've treated other customers in the past. And so that's why things like feedback mechanism in electronic marketplaces are really useful. Because there, if I cheat you, you're going to go online and write a review and that's going to be costly to me. And because I know that, I'm less likely to cheat you in the first place. I think it's rational to trust firms that care about the future, and it's foolish to trust firms that don't care about the future. And so, for instance, it's, it's foolish to trust a pop-up store. Right? A pop-up store is not going to be around tomorrow, and so they're not, they have no incentive to keep any promises that they're making to you. Maybe less obviously, firms that are close to bankruptcy. Right? Those are run by managers who care much more about today's profits than about future profits, because if they don't increase today's profits, they're going to be out of business in the first place. Another example would be firms in which employees are being rewarded very strongly for short-term performance, for quarterly earnings or quarterly performance. Because again, decisions are then made by employees who care a lot about the present profits and they care much less about future profits. And so again, these are the kind of firms in which I'd be suspicious about whether or not they're going to keep their promises.